8-bit guy who was recently doing a video rebuilding his Macintosh Plus and talking about how hard it is to get hard drives for the old 8-bit SCSI interface because most of the drives that he can find are dying, bad sectors, and so forth. There is a solution for this, and I would like to show you how it's done. Here we see my old Apple II GS, which has the Apple SCSI card and an external SCSI hard drive. And I've got another one here also. Um, the SCSI drives for the Apple IIs are also having the problem of getting old and dying and hard to find. But I found a solution here. If we take a look inside of this one, there's something a little special about this drive. Well, that's odd. That looks like a pretty new drive to me. It's a Seagate Cheetah ST39102LC. And it's, um, it looks pretty fancy. How does this work? Well, this actually is a 9 gig server drive. This is a server SCSI drive. And this actually is a drive that doesn't even, it doesn't even have this connector. What it has is the server style of, of SCSI interface here. Now let me grab this here. Like this. This is what this came from here. And this has a really bizarre connector on here. This is an all-in-one SCSI connector that includes power, data, and a whole bunch of other things all in one single connector. And this is called a hot plug tray so that you can just push this into the, the server. This connects everything all at once and you're done. And so what I've done here is I'm just taking this drive putting it in this chassis and then there's a little adapter card here that plugs into this SCA connector, this 80 pin thing here and it's breaking out from this to have the power and the data go in and there's also additional jumpers over here to set the ID for this so that it can have the, um, the proper ID in the chain of devices. So this allows me to use modern drives, which are much easier to find. These also are obsolete. We've now switched to a new technology. It's similar to SATA that everyone is using at home now. These drives, they stopped using these about seven years ago at this point, roughly. But there's still an abundance of these out there. So this is a solution. You can pick these up dirt cheap. This 9 gig drive is probably, you know, 50 cents at this point on eBay. Um, I guess the there is one downside here. These, as server drives, are usually very high performance and very hot running. So you don't want to get a drive that's really fast to put in an old computer. Um, there are SCSI drives that are 7200 RPM and the server drives tend to be faster at 10,000 and 15,000 RPM and they require active cooling or the most likely the drive will kill itself from the heat that it's producing if you shove it in an old computer that doesn't have a fan. Now this drive, these were slow, this is not a really super fast one um, I mean, it says Cheetah, but that's just the brand name, you know. So um, look for an older style SCA drive that's, you know, 7200 RPM. Get one of these adapters for five bucks or so. Tuck this inside your old antique computer. No one will even know it was there because most of the time you can't even see the drive anyway. So this works. This works quite well with this. It works no trouble at all. And the reason it works is because the bus on these drives is backwards compatible with the old standards. So this, the bus on here has no problems whatsoever plugging into the old slow 
narrow channel bus that's available on this thing. No trouble at all. So hope that might help someone trying to get an old computer up and running again. Thanks for watching. And oh, I suppose I should actually show it in action just to demonstrate that this does work here. So here we go. And also, just for anyone who's working with these old external drives, be careful with these power supplies that run this. There's usually no covers over this stuff. You can get a good shock off of this stuff. So keep your hands away from any of the electronic bits and just turn it on carefully, you know. So it's no speed demon because it's limited by the speed of the bus of the old 8-bit Apple, but does does the job. Also, I do not have full access to all of the data or disk space on this thing. It's a 9 gig drive, but the Apple can only access about 32 meg. It's, it's really limited in what it can do. You can create additional volumes to give you additional 32 meg blocks, but you still can't get access to more than a couple hundred meg of it. So a, about 90% of that drive is unusable. But it doesn't, I don't care. That's not, that's not why I'm using it, you know. I'm not trying to have 9 gigs of Apple II games on here. Sure would be nice. I don't even know if the bus on here is even capable of accessing the full 9 gig. But like that's a whole other issue. I don't even care. Maybe someone else wants to work on that here, you know? But it is possible.